Kia ora, welcome to Shared Lunch, brought to you by Sharesies with Business Desk. My name is Rebecca Stevenson, Senior Journalist for Business Desk. Today on Shared Lunch, we're joined by Gary Miles, the CEO of Gentrack, which earlier this week released its results. Gentrack creates specialist software for energy and water companies and airports around the world. Before we get started, here's some important information. Investing involves risk. You might lose the money you start with. We recommend talking to a licensed financial advisor. We also recommend reading product disclosure documents before deciding to invest. Everything you're about to see and hear is current at the time of recording. Gentrack has been around for 35 years and it's listed on the NZX and ASX, but many Australians and Kiwis may not know who you are or what you do. So Gary Miles, let's start with the problem that Gentrack is solving and the opportunity or what you term a transformation. So Rebecca, um, yeah, we've been around 35 years, which is you know, pretty unique for, for tech companies, actually. The energy transition that's happening around the world, so as we move to net zero, um, the way humans consume and produce energy has to change. And this means all the systems that we've been relying on for you know, decades need to, to a large extent, need to be refactored and rebuilt. So those systems need to be replatformed around the world, and that's the software that we make we provide it to people like Mercury and Genesis here and uh, AGL and Origin and Red Energy in Australia. Th- those are the type of customers we have around the world. Yeah, and you'd obviously want to be, you know, a key player in that transition. Yeah. Um, can we talk about, we you know. We plan to be. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. Our, that's our ambition. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. it. That's, that's, what, that's what attracted me to this job. We would like to be a global leader to help drive this energy transformation, not only because we want to, make sure that we can get good returns for our shareholders and get good opportunities for our employees. But we also want to help evolve and accelerate the um, movement off of, you know, coal technologies, which we, we just don't, or carbon technologies. Mm. So, yeah. So speaking of shareholder returns, earlier this week, you know, you announced your latest half-year result. Um, talk me through that result. You must have been, you know, pretty pleased. And you've put out a really strong guidance uh, for the full year of 2024. So in the half-year, we did $102 million, uh, New Zealand dollars in revenue. It was up 21%. The 21% is a little bit misleading because we had – um, some headwinds of one-off revenues from the prior year of about $19.7 or $8 million that we didn't have this year. So the underlying growth was significantly higher than 21%. Um, we also upgraded our profits uh, from from uh, a, a range of about 20 to 25 to 23 to uh, close to 26. Um, you'll see the, the, the actual specifics in the, in the um and the earnings statement, it is our seventh consecutive upgrade. Um, we're pleased with the results. We, we um, are talking about coming in around 200 for the year. Um, and, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, cont- we, we put long-term guidance out at growing north of 15% annually, long to midterm guidance. So, um, you know, we're, we, we're just going to keep our head down and keep trying to deliver it. And, yeah. So it looks like you do have a growing retail investor group. Can you talk a little bit about what that means for the business? Look, we have, we have, we have, we're really pleased with our register. We have some great institutional um, holders and it's growing. Um, and then we have, we have a, a healthy and vibrant retail uh, community that follows us. I think what's great about like Sharesies and others is that, you know, in, in these type of podcasts is they can hear about technology and get you know get get kind of a close proximity to understand it and then be able to enact it and through their platforms and systems which is which is great I think it's amazing for New Zealand that this opportunity is there and uh, we're really pleased with our retail book and you've also expanded into the Middle East tell us a little bit about what you're doing there so we actually open an office in Saudi Arabia and they have a lot of credibility and we won some business both in the airports and in the energy and water space. There's a, uh, if you haven't seen it, Rebecca, there's a, um, a YouTube on Neom, which is the kind of modern city that, uh, that Saudi's trying to build. There's actually three of them, and we're running all the um, technology for that energy and water uh, piece. 
which is pretty exciting. And it's uh, because it's a completely green city, it's actually a, a beacon for some of the transition that the Middle East has to go through. And so we're using that as a launch pad to try to you know, talk to more players in the Middle East. So um, anyway, we have a team on the ground there, and it'll be expanding. One thing that is interesting is Saudi's announced you know, intentions to compete with Dubai in the airport mm-hmm. space, mm-hmm. building huge airports. Dubai just launched, said they're going to move to 200 million passengers flow in a year. Um, Kuwait's come out with big programs around uh, airports. So it is also a hub for that area, which is, um, and we have we have a good business there with Dubai and others. So that that's pretty good. You've also opened an office in India. What is your team doing there? So um, we're in Pune. I don't know if you're outside of Mumbai. Um, it's a big tech hub. We just clocked over 100 people in India. Having really opened that office about 15 months ago, well, we opened the office a little bit longer, but to really start to ramp up. And it's interesting because when you take in a development center like India, you need to be take it really one step at a time and make sure that the organ is accepted by by the uh, the rest of the, the rest of the body, so to speak. So India is starting to really, really have an impact. Um, and we're leaning more into it for a lot of testing, a lot of the delivery capabilities. Um, and that that will probably grow disproportionately to some of the other areas because you know we want to get to scale there. Um, but it's going really well. The business also cracked the NZX fifty last year. You know, what does that mean for you and for the business? And what are your next goals? Look, I'm mostly focused um, on on customers and our people and building the business. And then I kind of think the results come on the back of that. Um, it is pleasant to be in the NZ fifty. Uh, the stock is, you know, one of the best of the best performing of the year. Um, here, um, we would be in the ASX 300 if we were only listed in Australia. So we have the scale for that, but it's split on the exchange. So eventually, I think we'll get in the ASX 300 as well. Um, look, we're just, we just want to continue to bring shareholders good results and, and lead this transition. And I think that's uh, my, my main ambition would be to build a global leader um, company that We've been around 35 years. It'll be around the next 35 years. Um, that that's that's what gets me out of bed. Let's talk a little bit about Solia in Australia. You've obviously done some deals there with Energy Australia, and you've also invested in a business. Who is that, and why have you done that? So um, we did investment in a company called Amber Electric. They're actually a retailer, but they're a technology retailer. They set out to build technology, and they have a very interesting model where they. Um, they pass on the wholesale prices to, instead of marking it up and putting on customer's bill, they pass on the wholesale prices to the end consumer, and then they give the consumer the technology, which is shown and simpl- you know, simplified into an app to, to manage their solar and battery assets, to pump power into the grid, to make money from that, to consume greener energy. Um, and they also have all kinds of AI so that if you don't want to manage your own battery and, battery and solar, which people like to do for be an energy trader for the first week, <laughs> and then they realize, well, the, the AI is working pretty well. I'll let the system manage it. So in New South Wales, I think they've got 50% of their customers are getting paid each month, yeah. which is amazing. Um, they've got about 40% of the new battery and solar retail uptake in Australia. Um, we are helping them promote that technology around the world. As a matter of fact, they were with us here in, um, in Auckland, seeing a bunch of the retailers talking about how, you know, if that technology is appropriate for New Zealand, can we bring it here? It's pretty exciting. We're all obviously helping them in Europe and Asia and things like that, and there's a real interest. But we work with other players. We were, Energy Australia runs all their battery and solar on our technology. We want to get closer and closer to you know, this complicated area, just to make sure that we have a full uh, quiver of arrows, so to speak, to help with that. The business has really been expanding over the past 12 months or so. You know, how can you keep that going? And what do you think is next on the horizon? Look, I, we've just, I mean, <laughs> we love the markets we're in because in many ways they lead the globe. But now we're in 
for the utility space now we're in seven countries um eight depending on you know what anyway we're there's a lot of countries out there and um there's um a demand the big incumbent that's in our space um that had those systems for many many years you have sap and oracle mm -hmm. and uh those systems we th they support all kinds of verticals banking insurance manufacturing, the energy, and less so the water space. It just needs specific capabilities. So those systems are actually becoming end of life. They're retendering them. We want to answer that call. That's a huge opportunity for us globally. Um, our growth looks pretty, um, pretty. I don't want to say open-ended, but looks pretty, you know, potentially very exciting. But we need to execute against it. And mm. what we're saying in our earnings, which is important to say, is it, we decided to go to Asia and Europe um, about a year ago. We won't sign. We've had some initial success. We won't sign a lot of material contracts this year. But we look next to next year to start to bring those across. So, uh, But it takes time. You now you're talking about wanting to have conversations with businesses to get these deals going, and you've also said now you are having conversations with councils and local authorities in New Zealand over water. You know, Three Waters is dead. Is that a good thing for Gentrac, and what's going to happen there? That didn't make sense. I, so I want to commend the government for, for, for making this uh, step to uh, revisit, the you know, kind of recalibrate the way water is going to be serviced. A lot of those systems that were bought just were not new. And if you're going to put in a new system, you should put in one that's going to take you where you want to go. Um, now the councils are needing to make decisions. We have started talking with some of them. Um, we're pretty excited about that because I think we have a lot to bring to that conversation. And this is our heart. I mean, New Zealand's right. So we, we, we just understand water and we understand this. So for, for us... To, to be uh, a part of that is very important uh, nationally, et cetera, for, for, for our, our purpose. Um, we're pretty keen to engage, um, and we're starting. And the, the receptivity seems great, So, uh, but, you know, those decisions take time. And just in terms of the New Zealand business, you know, that is something that was highlighted as well in your result, you know, how much revenue. Can you talk a bit about, yeah, revenue in New Zealand, number of people you have here? Right. So we have a, a, approximately 200 people here. We are hiring. Our revenue grew 81 percent in New Zealand in the period. So um, I'm pushing uh, the team here to say, you know, you, you got to get 100. Go for 100. That's a, <laughs> that's a good marker, but it's a little bit um, outrageous, actually, growth. Because it's not like we're just cutting a disc. You have to keep in mind that when we run a program, we actually have to decommission an old system. We have to put in a new system. You have to make sure the system's not down. You know, you have to do migration of huge consumer loads, and just, just the data volume is is enormous. So it takes people and software. We're, we're we're a recurring software company, and we're a software company in our heart. But you have to have services to deliver it. Um, and um, but we're excited about where New Zealand is today versus you know where we've um, were a couple years ago. Actually, um, we do a lot of our core development here, and um, you know, I think we have a great team, so we're growing. So you've talked, obviously, about the opportunity. You can't be the only ones who are going to be looking to take a slice of that. You know, who are you competing with? Look, I, I, our competitors, I'd put them in two different buckets. There's the um, incumbents, like SAP and Oracle, and they are, you know, they're pretty keen to hold on to their revenue pools and, 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 and customers. Um, and... I think that's comfortable for some of the customers, and some customers, you know, want want to change. Um, as I mentioned, they have SAP in particular has end of life their system that's installed all over the world, so that's creating a compelling event to look around. Then we have new age competitors. Um, we have people like Octopus Group, which has Kraken. Um, there's a couple other ones. It's a little bit strange, Rebecca, because I come from the telco space, which replatformed about every eight years. So there were a lot of players that were competing for that replatforming. Because the water and energy space didn't replatform for about 25 years, there's just not that many players. There were several that came out with technology, but then they stumbled on delivering it and they've gone out of business or had a fire sale. Um, so the dynamic on com competition is interesting in this space, but because 
there's such a big job to, to be done, there will be more players that weigh in for sure. Mm. Now you talked, you know, a little bit there about your background in telco. You know, when you came in in 2020, things weren't looking amazing, I guess, for Gentrack is one way of putting it. Um, and you've definitely, analysts have said, you know, you've led a great sort of turnaround of the business. You know, what is your background and, you know, how have you brought that, I guess, to bear in your leadership of Gentrack? So, you know, I've been in the B2B, like software space my entire life, big systems, um, the last role before I, I, I came into Gentrack, I was on the C-suite of a uh, company called Amdocs. We also did billing and customer care, which similar to this. But for the telco industry, um, and we were you know, by far the largest. We did about 20 to 25% of the world's telco revenues, AT&T, Vodafone Group, Singtel Group. All of those ran on our systems. Um, big business, NASDAQ, $4 billion revenue business. Um, it's pretty similar. The technology is different, but how to sell it, how to service it, how to deliver it, how to run programs around the world is pretty similar. So we were fortunate that I was able to um, to bring a lot of that knowledge and bring some people from that space that could help us. Um, we have had a turnaround, um, but we've had a lot of help. I mean, the, the team's amazing. By the way, our chief operating officer ran delivery for Amdocs. That he managed six thousand people at Amdocs. That you know transformed all those companies I talked about. We just brought in Mark Reese, who's ex CTO of Zero, who's a you know technology specialist. Our, you know our CFO, our chief people officer, our general managers, super strong team. Our marketing. So um, I feel really pleased and fortunate to have been able to bring this team together and I think they're um, one to bet on and um, you know I, as people I really trust actually yeah in this just the period that you've had you know what do you see as your best success so far and you know coming to perhaps the end of your time what will you say has been a success if you look back at Gentrack you know it's hard to put Rebecca it's hard to put your finger on one thing I think it's always a constellation of different things we also I think the first one is we are choosing an industry that's on the rise. I mean, you can't create waves in the ocean, but you can ride them. This is the biggest program on the planet. So those companies that perform well will outperform the market. Those perform companies that lead will just should smash it. Um, my objective, once again, is to create a leadership position that's going to – so the next 10 years – the industry will replatform, and we would like to be one of the leaders that does that. So there's a 10-year growth, and then after that, you're you know you're the incumbent for the next phase, and we'd like to continue to stay in front. Uh, that's the kind of legacy that um, that I'd like to leave with my team and all of our gen trackers, and that would be a great success. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Gary, and thanks everyone for tuning in. You can watch Shared Lunch on YouTube or follow the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a rating and please comment about what you'd like us to cover next. Before we head off, here's a special offer from Business Desk. If you use the code Shared Lunch 2024, you get $100 off an annual subscription to Business Desk. Terms and conditions apply. Find out more at businessdesk.co.nz. Thank you.